of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we prepare to celebrate, let us be mindful of our need for God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of spirit, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of your Father, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to him through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons and the younger son said to his father, father, Give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son gathered all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine were fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And then the celebration began. Now, the older son had been out in the field and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered a fattened calf. He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Gospel of the Lord. That story is like sitting down at table with our family. We know it really well. At times in our life, perhaps we have identified with the young son. At times, perhaps with the older son. At times, with God's grace, even perhaps as the father. My very favorite line in this entire gospel 
is this. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him. In my mind's eye, I see that father standing at the edge of his property, gazing, hoping, day after day, until one day, finally, he catches a glimpse. It is interesting also that the son has a longer speech, all rehearsed, but he doesn't even get halfway through it until the father interrupts him and says, quick, go get the best robe and kill the fattened calf and let us celebrate. This gospel teaches us so much. It teaches us about a God whose compassion and forgiveness keeps watching, hoping, yearning, to catch sight of those children who have gone away. And it teaches us that God celebrates with great joy when even one comes home. Not because the younger son deserved it, only because the father's love is that great. May this inspire us, however we have strayed, to come home, to let God's forgiveness embrace us once again. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, worship glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. God greatly desires to share with us new life. Let us confidently place our needs before this generous God. For all members of the church to seek new life for themselves and to give new life to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those alienated from families and for countries alienated from each other, that they may be reconciled, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives are threatened by illness, poverty, or violence to find the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us be reconciled with those whom we have hurt and come to new life during Lent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious, merciful God, you sent your son Jesus to reconcile us to you and to each other. Hear these our prayers, that we might come joyfully to your eternal feast. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of our hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's children. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to one another again. Adversaries join hands and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your son whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, he reclined at supper. He himself took bread into his hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may he keep us in communion with our Pope and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. 
Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together when the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in the new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. For those watching this at home on television, you can join in keeping this ministry on the air by watching the screen at the end of the celebration for instructions about how you may participate. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Trees to bend, though straight and tall, so must we. like to thank you for joining us this morning at uh, Sunday Mass. It's an opportunity for those shut in and those in hospitals and nursing homes to have an opportunity uh, to share in the celebration of Sunday, the Sunday Mass. Due to your generosity in the CSA and also your individual gifts that you constantly send us, this Mass is possible. And we ask that you continue to be generous because through your goodness, we are able to reach out to many and give them the presence and the peace of Christ and the glory of his praise and thanksgiving to his Father. We thank you very much. God bless you all and have a good day. <laughs>